Well, um, the good thing, the, the, the highlight really, is the strength of the UK market for my members. But we re rely very heavily on overseas trade. Uh, about 70% of what we produce in this country is looking for an export market. Now, of course, we know the problems that we see on the mainland continent at the moment. Um, France, for example, has not recovered too well. Um, Southern Europe, still in the doldrums. Um, uh, North America, which has traditionally been a good market for us, is pretty good at the moment. Um, we'll also be um, taking some trade missions and exhibition groups over to South America, which is also a good area. Um, but uh, not so good uh, are countries like India, although Mr Modi is now in power and talking about investing in infrastructure and dynamising business there. Hasn't quite happened yet, so it may be another year or two before that comes back. Um, so we're hungry for exports still, but we're, we're confident, have some confidence in the UK market because there's a good, a good pipeline in, in the construction projects at the moment. Well, you know, um, we do a lot of work with, uh, with uh, tracking companies and systems companies and the electronics now that, that uh, go in machines and accompany machines. And, and some of the um, uh, equipment now is really top state of the art and can do things that we'd have never dreamt of for 10 years ago. Um, I think we've all heard about uh, the discussions about driverless machines now and that's very much coming to the fore. So it's not just in mining applications but I think probably as we go forward we're going to see other applications where the operators uh, are not to be seen actually in the machines. Uh, one of the key issues that we see is actually the skills agenda because we've surveyed our members and over 70 percent of them have told us that they're having issues in recruiting and upskilling staff. And we know in the wider construction industry there are going to be literally hundreds of thousands of vacancies coming up on construction sites. And, and it's no different within the manufacturing community because we're still looking for the, the right blend of skills coming in as machines become more sophisticated that skills around IT and electronics are becoming more and more important. And of course we're competing with other manufacturing industries and other, other career options. So we've been very pleased that we've been able to set up uh, a, quite a high-powered skills panel where we're partnering with uh, some senior professors in various universities, uh, organisations like the Engineering Employers Federation, and working out a, a strategy where we can uh, actually engage more with higher education and further education. Um, and of course this year with plant works in the first week of June, the last day of that is going to be our student day. So we're quite excited about that because that's the, where we want to try and engage far more with youth than we've, we've done in the past. I think the exciting time comes from the fact that we've gone through a real progression over the last 15 years, say with environmental standards. You know, we've taken something like 97.5% of the pollutants and noise out of our machines over that period in response to legislation from Brussels. And I think now the excitement going forward is that more of the R&D spend is going to be spent on what the customer wants, not what uh, perhaps a bureaucrat or, or a keen environmentalist might want from, from Brussels. So I think over the next period is going to be the time where the manufacturers are going to be far more able to be responsive to, uh, to customer demand and preferences because there'll be so much more in terms of options going forward. So I think probably the watchword is, is technology and innovation really over the next uh, year or two.